Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today we're gonna to talk about whether or not I should upgrade my 2013 Mac Pro, the infamous trash can, now just a base model, mind you, a quad-core base model, whether or not I should upgrade that to an all-new M1 Mac Mini fully loaded. Check it out. Save it for conversation. So what's motivating the topic for this video? Upgrading a 2013 Mac Pro to possibly a fully loaded M1 Mac Mini. Well, I'm in some pain, folks. My 2013 Mac Pro, still working, but it is really struggling with a few things. Now, like I said in the intro, it's just a base model Mac Pro, quad core with the D300 graphics cards. I haven't really done anything to upgrade it uh, except the RAM, and I've got about 32 gigabytes of RAM, and that really hasn't been an issue. I am really taxing the 2013 Mac Pro by plugging in four displays. If you click the link above, you can check out my setup video where I upgraded to four displays, and you can see all the peripherals that I have connected to the computer. And while I'm editing especially, I will see some screen flickering and little like little flashes of black frames here and there. And this morning when I sat down to use my Mac Pro after the weekend, the screen had all kinds of sort of garbled stuff on it. And it was usable, but it needed to be restarted, obviously. Because after a restart, everything seems to be working fine. Now, so far today, I have not taxed my computer with anything intensive, no video editing, nothing like that. So everything seems to be running smoothly. And overall, it's a really good computer. Bunch of Safari tabs open, all kinds of productivity stuff. You name it, I can throw pretty much anything at it uh, as far as normal use goes, and there isn't a problem. And I will say that this Mac Pro is also exceptional at working with my 1080 vlog footage from my EOS R, and it's doing a pretty good job with the 4K footage I throw at it, whether it's the ProRes stuff I get with my EOS R and the Ninja 5, as well as the XFAVC codec that I get with my C300 Mark II. Here's where some of the issues are. Not only am I getting some scrambled screen stuff happening, I'm also getting the occasional kernel panic, especially when I'm editing. The biggest issue that I'm facing is simply transcode times. When I finish a vlog or when I am ready to upload a version of this 4K Dodge House project, simply transcoding that stuff from H.264 or whatever other codec I'm working in to H.264 takes a long time. And I keep watching YouTube video after YouTube video about how blazing fast these M1 Macs are, and I want in on it. So today I sat down and just did some cursory exploration. Well, how much would a Mac Mini cost fully spec'd out, or maybe with a more conservative hard drive configuration? How much would Apple give me if I traded in my 2013 Mac Pro to put towards the purchase of a new Mac Mini so that it was almost like it didn't cost me anything at all except giving up a 2013 Mac Pro? Well, Apple was gonna give me $750 towards the purchase of an M1 Mac Mini, and although that wouldn't cover the full cost of the machine, it's a good majority of it. So then I started having to look at all of the in and out issues, and by in and out, I mean I.O., connecting monitors. I have two Pegasus R8, and I actually have a Pegasus R4 that maybe I'd want in the mix as well. And would the two, the two Thunderbolt 3, and I think Thunderbolt 4 ports on the Mac Mini be able to handle all of this bandwidth? Well, in doing some research, I found out that the Mac Mini can only support a total of two displays, one via HDMI and one via Thunderbolt port. This is a break from the Mac Minis in the past that have been able to support more monitors, especially through the Thunderbolt ports. And so this is a really big sticking point for me, especially since I have four monitors. One of those monitors, my preview monitor up above, has to be connected via HDMI for Final Cut to recognize it as a preview monitor. So I'm limited right there as far as connectivity. I can't put some weird adapter in and connect it to Thunderbolt or over a USB port. I have to have that connected by HDMI. Now the other wildcard in my configuration is I have two Thunderbolt 1 displays. Those Thunderbolt displays cannot be connected to the Mac Mini 
directly without some kind of an adapter and function. In doing some research on YouTube, I found a couple videos, one specifically, where this kid was able to hook six monitors up to a MacBook Air and to a Mac Mini. Well, he had to use a couple different adapters and he used specialty software called DisplayLink to work with his adapter device to sort of trick the OS into allowing for a monitor connection over a USB 3.0 connection. Now this made me think, okay, well, we have a solution here. Six monitors, I only need four, so if I cobble these adapters together, I should be able to get what I need. Well, going further down the rabbit hole, I found out that when you use this DisplayLink software coupled with one of these adapters, and I think this is mostly because of the display link software, the quality and resolution, the sharpness of the image goes down noticeably. Now, for most of the YouTubers that I watched, they said, look, if you're just doing basic productivity, spreadsheets, email, web browsing, whatever, it's not a huge deal. But if you're doing graphic design, motion graphics, video editing, you're probably going to be bothered by the drop in sharpness and resolution. So that for me sort of immediately took it out of the running as an option. I'd rather hang on to my 2013 Mac Pro and try to limp it along for the next year and possibly two years. So in trying to wrap my head around all the different devices that I have and the monitors that I have and trying to connect them to the M1 Mac Mini, I had to sort of diagram it out. So I jumped into Affinity Designer and this is what I came up with. I've got my 1080 preview monitor above my 4K monitor my Thunderbolt displays, the two R8s, I've got a USB hub on my desk, an SD card reader on my desk, an HDD dock, and this was how I was thinking I'd have to route all these, but I already see a big problem here in what I was thinking. Here's where the issue is. The 1080 preview monitor and the 4K display I have going through, and this is wrong, mini display port, it's actually just display port, to USB 3.0 via this display link software coupled with this StarTech.com USB to display port adapter. Well, that's not going to work with the 1080 preview monitor because Final Cut needs the preview monitor to work with the AV output feature to be over HDMI. So this doesn't work at all. So as I was researching, I came across this OWC product uh, that is a Thunderbolt hub, the first kind of hub for Thunderbolt in existence. That's one of the things with USB is you can make a hub that has four, five, eight, 12, whatever connections. Well, with Thunderbolt, you can't do that until now. And OWC has this four port Thunderbolt hub that's going to expand the connectivity of these M1 computers, specifically the Mac mini. Now, what it's saying is, if you scroll down, you can see here that it's saying you can connect a single 5K, 6K, or 8K display or two 4K displays. So there needs to be some testing done, and this product is in limited release right now. I've seen a few YouTubers who have their hands on it, but they're not really testing it the way that I would. And on the OWC website here, it looks like it's ready for just for pre-order, so I'm not sure how some of these other YouTubers have gotten them through alternative vendors. So let me go ahead and pull up the breakdown that I think might get me where I need to go, but I'm not sure. All right, so we have our M1 Mac Mini. We still have our 1080 preview monitor, 4K Dell, and the two Thunderbolt displays. This hub stuff is all the same as the last one. I don't think any of that would change. If I have a free USB 3.0 slot, whether it's here or on the dock, I, I might break out some of these connections to spread them out across more ports just to be on the safe side. So what I'm thinking is the 1080 preview monitor, again, because Final Cut needs it to be connected by HDMI to be a preview monitor to use the AV output feature, that's going to just get connected directly via HDMI. So there's two ways to connect the two Thunderbolt displays. I can daisy chain one Thunderbolt display to the other and then connect that one with a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter to this Thunderbolt 4 hub from OWC. Or I can go one Thunderbolt display with the TB2 to TB3 adapter directly and then this one directly to the hub with the TB2 to TB3 adapter. And then that gets connected to the Mac Mini. And then when it comes to my drives, I've got two Pegasus 2 R8s that are Thunderbolt 2 and then this 4K Dell monitor, I'm thinking I can connect using a DisplayPort to Mini DisplayPort cable and have that connect to the R8, daisy chain that one to the other R8, and then run that all to the Mac Mini using a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. The big mystery is whether or not having four displays in the mix is going to work with the Mac Mini. And does a 4K monitor from Dell using DisplayPort to a Mini DisplayPort cable into the extra Thunderbolt port on the back of the R8, does that send the video signal through to that 
to that second Thunderbolt port on the back of the Mac Mini? Or does the Mac Mini recognize that there's simply too much information that's being pushed out to those displays and it keeps that fourth display from working at all? So my question to all of you is, does anyone have any idea if this would work? I think this is really my only option if I'm going to try to replace the 2013 Mac Pro with the M1 Mac Mini for the next year to two years, trying to bridge again the transition from Intel-based Macs to the ARM-based Macs. Now going back to my in and out issues, I just have too much stuff to rely on an iMac an iMac Pro, a laptop, whatever, even with docks and hubs and all that stuff. I just need something that is a desktop computer that's in between the Mac Mini and the cheese grater, which is really what the 2013 Mac Pro is. But because there have been no updates, and even if I were to swap out to a 12 core processor, I can't really upgrade the GPU because the D700 graphics cards are so expensive out on the market. I think they're well over a thousand dollars each that trying to even upgrade uh, my Mac Pro to being the fully loaded version from 2013 is not really going to get me good ROI on that kind of investment. So for the type of user I am, I'm really stuck. <gasps> Now, the Mac Mini is certainly not a long-term solution, but the boost in performance that I would get, especially because I'm a Final Cut Pro 10 editor, makes it well worth it to really explore the possibility of bridging the Mac Pro 2013 trash can to a 2021 or 2022 Mac Pro Mini. So that's what we're facing, and I'm asking all of you for your help. What do you think I should do knowing my configuration and knowing the limitations that the Mac Mini has with connecting monitors. Otherwise, I think I'm just going to have to pick up a Mac Mini and test it out myself with this adapter and see what we come up with. If it ends up not working, I will most likely return the computer to Apple as well as the adapter and go back to my current configuration, limping along until 2021 or 2022 when Apple comes out with hopefully a Mac Pro Mini. That's all I've got for this one. Again, everyone, I would love your help trying to figure this out and making a decision. And just a friendly reminder, the best thing that you can do to help support the channel is click the like button below. If you haven't done so by now, take a second to do that. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, and I know that about 80% of you watching the majority of my videos are not subscribers, click that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time we upload a video. I think that's going to do it for this one. Until the next one, everyone, I'll see you soon.